the value of watching tape while keeping an eye on Bryce Young's gameplay and off the weight scale is the approach for the Houston Texans. And to tie it all in, we want to develop a great team here that we can deliver wins to the city of Houston. We want to deliver a championship here to the city of Houston, and that's what it, that's what it'll be about. You are locked on Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Be sure you are subscribing to the Locked On Texan Podcast on all of the major podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Podcasts, Megaphone, Spotify, along with subscribing on YouTube as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL and NBA. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. I'm John Hickman. Of course, I'm joined by none other than Texan Credential Media member and Sports Illustrator's own Cody Davis got a couple of things to talk about today, mainly centered around the quarterback position. Who would you rather have? C.J. Bryson. For a lot of you guys out there, the numbers have been growing in the past two months. Even Anthony Richardson, I think, has been thrown in the mix and, you know, in terms of what Houston could possibly do at the quarterback position. But I think it's important to start off with how D'Amico Ryan's views uh, Bryce Young size as a non-factor in determining whether or not the Houston Texans will draft him or not. And regarding Bryce Young and his size, uh, D'Amico Ryan's new head coach, D'Amico Ryan, said that the guy has done it at the highest level in college football and size hasn't seemed to be a problem. I don't see it as an issue. You see the anticipation. You see the accuracy. You see how this guy is calm in critical moments. And I, don't think, I think all of that matters for the Houston Texans when looking for a quarterback simply because prior to the opportunity to draft the Bryce Young and even the C.J. Stroud, which we will get into, and even at moments with Deshaun Watson, I think when you look at how he characterize and describe Bryce Young as a quarterback, the accuracy, the anticipation, calm and critical moments that has been lacking for this quarterback room in the past two seasons. And this is an opportunity for Houston to get it right. So Cody, giving it over to you, you know, but well, before I do, excuse me, looking at why Bryce Young isn't an issue for the Houston Texans. We've heard, James Limford said, we've heard Nick Casario said, we've heard D'Amico Ryans allude to it and said, basically for Houston, when evaluating the players that they really like, when they sit up their draft board and they say, you know what, one through 30, these are the players we really like. They're not going based off of pro days. They're not going based off of combines. They're not going based off of, you know, the T-shirt Olympics and what they weigh and, uh, and things of that nature. They are going off of, as a collective group, what this player has done in their collegiate career. And if I'm being quite honest with you, no matter who I would like for the Houston to draft their quarterback, you can't make too many cases for a quarterback above, uh, more for a quarterback than Bryce Young and what he's been able to do at Alabama playing under Bill O'Brien in a pro style offense and winning a national championship and a Heisman just mm -hmm. being as dominant as he's been as for a quarterback for Nick, Nick Saban. I understand it. Demigo Ryan's is an Alabama alumni, as I said before, and I'm sure even with his days with San Fran before he even got to Houston, he's probably calling up a couple of a couple of his guys that he knows out there and to this day, right now, he's probably hitting up uh, 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 Nick Saban. And I believe that Nick Casario is probably doing the same thing. Tell us about this guy that when you strip away his height concerns, when you strip away his weight concern, when you strip away his physicality in the sense of uh, he's not the big Anthony Richardson, he's not the Will Levis, he's not even the C.J. Stroud. When you strip away that conversation – uh, those issues from the conversations. Tell us about this quarterback and anticipation, 
accuracy, calm, and critical moments. I think those are the three things you're looking for in a quarterback. And I also would like to add before I give it over to you, Bryce Young, his game includes not taking hits. If you've watched Bryce Young throughout his career at Alabama, that's what makes him such a smart and cerebral player. He understands that his size could be an issue. So you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to live to play another down. I'm going to live to play another series. And in his game, when you see big hits coming, he folds up in order to get back up on the field. So, you know, again, D'Amico Ryans and his coaching staff and his front office collectively, they're doing their due diligence on a lot of these quarterbacks coming out. I believe that they are picking a quarterback at number two. I wouldn't be upset if it's Bryce Young. And I say that because if they are sold on them, we got six years to find out whether or not they got it right. And hopefully we got more than six years because if that's the case, that means that he signed an extension. He's going to be here for the long term. But, John, the one thing that I do love about Bryce Young's size is the fact that I'm looking at him as a prospect that is more so of a pure quarterback. You just mentioned Anthony Richardson and a lot of us, including myself to a certain extent, we like Anthony Richardson due to what he can do with his athleticism. And he reminds us of who? Cam Newton, another big body quarterback who used his athleticism a lot in order to be the guy that became a top 10 and during the 2000, what was that, 15, 16 season where he became the league's MVP. However, at the end of the day, you still want a pure quarterback. And when I take a look at Bryce Young for all the attributes that you literally just listed off, including with his accomplishments, that lets me know that the Houston Texans are in a position where not only are you going to have an opportunity to get a franchise quarterback, but a guy who is the definition of what you want in that position. And the one guy that I can pair Bryce Young to a lot is future Hall of Famer. No, I'm not saying this because I'm a Saints fan, but Drew Brees. You take a look at Drew Brees. There was a lot of concerns about his height, whether or not he could sustain in the NFL for an extremely long time. He went to New Orleans, of course, got paired with with, uh, an offensive genius in Sean Payton. And what we saw over the next, what, 15 years during his time with the New Orleans Saints was a guy who went out there and was the pure definition of a quarterback, somebody who who was great at ball placement, somebody who who knows how to make great decision making, somebody who knew how to make reads. And everything that I just mentioned in Drew Brees is what I see already in Bryce Young. And that is part of the reason why where I look at Bryce Young and I take a look at the fact that he knows how to play the game. He knows how to play the position. Not only that, he also knows how to not take hits because even if you are a big body quarterback like Anthony Richardson, like we had here a couple of years ago with Deshaun Watson, someone who was able to use his athleticism. Um, and even Don't forget Brock Osweiler. On, if you want to throw Brock Osweiler in there, go right ahead. But even when you take a look at the athleticism that's going on right now with the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson, those quarterbacks that I'm naming, they are willing to take big hits because they are pretty successful at it. But like I just mentioned, you don't want your quarterbacks to take a lot of unnecessary hits. And when you take a look at the quarterbacks who have sustained long-term success, like a Drew Brees, like a Tom Brady, this is where I see Bryce Young as of right now. I also would like to add that, and you know, it hasn't been too many long-term um, quarterbacks that's been undersized in the NFL. You mentioned Drew Brees. You know, Tom Brady isn't undersized. No, no, I, I wasn't also... saying Tom Brady. Under... No, no, no. I was, no, I was no. saying, I, look, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was saying like, quarterbacks who did not want to take unnecessary hits. That's what no, I meant by Tom no, Brady. No, I get it. No, I'm, but I was I was going to pivot to Russell Wilson as another quarterback that is under six foot, and he's had a long, successful career up until last year. He stunk it up, but I think that'll <laughs> switch up things. That, things was, that situation will switch up. Then you look at Kyler Murray, but when I look at the, the likes of the bigger QBs, you know, even if he was a bigger guy, you don't want your quarterback to willingly take those hits. Nope. And so that has worked in the favor of a Drew Brees who had a 20-year career. That has worked in the favor of a, of, a, of a quarterback like Russell Wilson, who, of course, when you look at Drew Brees and Russell Wilson, 
they are bigger in stature in terms of the, you know, and I, and I think I think that's going to come around once Young gets to Houston or whatever franchise he's drafted to, and he gets with an NFL nutritionist that's going to be able to beef him up the right way. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, when you come to the NFL from college, all you have to worry about is football. You ain't got to worry about <laughs> class no more. You ain't got to worry about no midterms, no hmm. no finals. All you worry about is class. I mean, all you worry about is the NFL and football. But I think the perfect to bring it back to what you said, the perfect example of quarterbacks not taking hits. I forget which offseason it was. We became a big thing where people started to notice Brady's workout, offseason workout plans and who the guy, he, the trainer he was working out with and how he practiced, mm-hmm. practice, practice, not taking those hits at the mm-hmm. NFL level. Now, of course, every team that Brady has played for, for the most part, they put a very good offensive line around them, which helps. We all know that if you come through the middle, Brady's going to have an issue with it. But that's a part of Bryce Young's game. And if the greatest of all time was able to do that, and he's been successful, of course, he is a bigger guy, then I can understand how mentally that is a part of what Bryce Young prepares for for the next level, not taking those hits because it's already a part of his game right now. When Mm -hmm. you look at him, when I talk about this franchise viewing tape as more of a resource than anything else they can do with just shorts and t-shirts and and drop fit on. And uh, I think it's no bull now. Um, (laughs) This past season, I look at games against Tennessee. I look at games against Kansas state. I look at games again, and I want to clarify it. I look at the UT game where (laughs) it was difficult for him. He played the Texas Longhorns play one of the better, better defensive games I've seen them play in almost a decade. And he found a way late to win that game. Those numbers were not impressive, 27 to 39, 213, uh, 69 completion percentage, one touchdown, sacked a couple of times. But I want to mention and go right back to what you we heard D'Amico Ryan say. You see how calm this guy is in critical moments. And if you go back and watch that game in the fourth quarter, he made plays in critical moments to win that game. And so he probably is a guy that D'Amico Ryan looks at Nick Casario. Nick looks at D'Amico. D'Amico looks at the coaching staff. The coaching staff looks at the front office. They call up a couple (laughs) of players, their connections, and say, you know what, at number two, he is the guy we want, regardless of how anybody else feels. And you know what I love most about D'Amico Ryan's Highlighting the fact of how calm he is, especially in the pocket. The last starting quarterback that we had, that was one of his biggest issues, that Davis Mills never looked calm. He never looked relaxed. There was too many times where he just looked jittery to, to try to make the, the 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 best play other than the correct play. And I think after you go through a season and a half of that, that's probably why another reason why, you know, you talk about one of the best attributes of Bryce Young, his calmness is something that is that that has very well sold this organization as of right now. The tournament is heating up, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's up to one k back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just go to FanDuel.com/slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then from there, you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss out on your shot at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Thursday installment of Locked On Texans. Tomorrow, we will be joined by our guy, Cole Thompson. Look, ladies and gentlemen, you talk one about... Of the, one, one of the more uh, lively characters. <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. I love Cole, man. And I wouldn't even consider Cole Texan Twitter. Listen, Cole does some amazing work covering the Houston Texans. And mm-hmm. one of the more in college football in general, in My college God. football, man. And and the thing about it is like, when I watch college football, I mainly watch for those guys that I know is going to break my heart. Mm. And some of the top guys, but Cole is amazing in his job. I, listen, I'm, I'm doing a breakdown of him right now. <laughs> so Cole Thompson will be on with us tomorrow. That's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, sir. And speaking of looking forward to it, Cal McNair is definitely looking forward to the future of this organization. Yesterday at the owners meeting, he had an opportunity to speak to the media 
And the majority of the time, he just spoke on how excited he is about this franchise. Um, he thanked the fans on several occasions of sticking with the organization throughout what has been a very hard, very long, very heartbreaking, or whatever adjective you want to use, tough three years. However, he spoke on the promises, the excitement of having D'Amico Ryans as head coach, spoke on how well Nick Casario is starting to revamp this roster. And he also spoke on how excited he is about the NFL draft. And we all know with that number two overall pick, nine times out of 10, he's talking about the excitement of having a new franchise quarterback. John, we just finished talking about Bryce Young, but there's another guy who could fall at number two, CJ. I look at this as a win-win situation Absolutely. for the Houston Texans, man. I've been asked on several occasions, who would I prefer? And a lot of times I just say, whoever sit that number two, because I truly do believe both of these guys have the potential and the ability to revamp a franchise, any franchise that they go to and get them to the level where they want to be, especially considering that, I hate to bring this up, the Texans did have a guy a couple of years ago, but unfortunately that went down the drain. And it's even more exciting because when you lose a franchise quarterback, it's not it, it, it's it's hard to try to replace that talent at, in a short amount of time like the Houston Texans are about to do in less than a month. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. That's the best way to put it. Hmm. Whoever goes one, you take the <laughs> other at two. And I, and I get it. When you look at comparing the two, 2021 Bryce Young, Heisman winner, Nearly 4,900 yards, 47 touchdowns, Damn. seven interceptions, right? Up. 167.5 passer rating and, and three rushing touchdowns. And again, I mentioned Heisman. Then he follows that up with last year's season, uh, 3,300 passing yards, 32 touchdowns, five interceptions, 163 passer rating, 85 yards on the ground and four rushing touchdowns. He was uh, touchdowns, excuse me. He was six in Heisman voting. Uh, look at CJ Stroud in 2021. A 71 point, basically 72 completion percentage, 4,400 <laughs> yards, 44 touchdowns, six interceptions, 886 uh, passer rating. Uh, finished fourth in Heisman 21, 22 comes back, 66.3 completion percentage, 36, nearly 3,700 yards, 41 touchdowns, six interceptions. So, uh, finished third in Heisman voting. When you look at both of these quarterbacks, you know what value you are getting from both of those. If we're going based off of their in I mean, collegiate career, neither one of those quarterbacks give the ball up in both seasons, under 10 interceptions. Uh, Bryce Young, 12 total. C.J. Stroud, 12 total. They are not quarterbacks who are known to give the ball away. That's a plus. We just talked about how D'Amico Ryans views uh, Bryce Young. I think when you look at C.J. Stroud, let's get comfortable. Let's talk about it. So my, my pick hmm. is C.J. Stroud. I think C.J. Stroud to Houston would be a much better look. That's just me personally. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the comments. We'll be in the comments. Thank God. John Hickman isn't a part of the <laughs> Texas brass. To be However, you know, I look at CJ Stroud and I can recognize that Bryce Young may be more equipped for the current Texans. But if you draft CJ Stroud, then I believe that with CJ Stroud at number 12, you draft the receiver. Bryce Young, you don't necessarily, I don't think, have to draft that receiver. If you look at his what he was able to do in terms of his numbers and statistically and how he was able to win games this previous season, didn't have Jamison Williams, didn't have, you know, John Metch, didn't have a lot of the top receivers in college football compared to everybody feel in love with Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. This, this past season. Everybody is talking about Chris Olave uh, for the New York Jets and Gary Will. I mean, for the, for the New Orleans Saints and Gary Wilson for the New York Jets and how everybody's like, you got to go get Jackson Smith and Njigba at 12. And I think <laughs> that is what, when you compare and contrast the two, that's what you look at. And that may play in the favor of a Bryce Young, but I think if Houston is, is, is evaluating, excuse me, C.J. Stroud, then you, you look at him and say, well, you know what? We have to invest in our quarterback immediately with number 12. Um, but I like C.J. Honestly, I've said it over and over again. I think that Bryce Young does give you the element of – the critical moments, calm and cool and collecting in critical moments. I think that CJ gives you the element of, because I'm sorry, guys, when I saw Tua get hurt multiple Tua. times this past year, 
that made me look at the shorter quarterbacks a whole lot differently because prior to uh, Tua, I had Drew Brees to go off of. You know what's helpful for Drew Brees? Sean Payton built a office around him. Hmm. I had Russell Wilson to go based off of. You know what was helpful for, helpful for Russell Wilson? He had the Legion of Boom to start off his career, and then he was able to command an offense that Pete Carroll and, and the guys around him was able to build around Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson is also a biz, bigger quarterback, and I think he's more smarter in terms of a quarterback play than a Tua took over lower. Mm-hmm. But prior to Tua, that was mainly the two guys I had to go off of. And Tua last year really scared me. Tua is a guy that I think to this day should not be playing football, honestly. I really don't think he should be playing football. Mm. And that scares me. So that's why I personally look at C.J. Stroud and I say, you know what, you are my number one quarterback because I don't think I'm missing – I don't think there's a big gap in between the two. If I'm going based off of college, I do have Bryce Young here. But I have C.J. Stroud right here. It's not like Bryce Young – and then I have Anthony Richardson. And then oh. somewhere on the floor in, in you know under me is Will Levis. Right? God, dog. Um, under you? <laughs> He's not even on the charts. <laughs> I, I think – and shout out to Ryan Leaf, by the way. You guys may clown him for being, uh, you know, drafted before paid man in and had the big blow up back in the day. Just leave it alone, all right, in the <laughs> locker room. But he's still a quarterback, played quarterback in this league, went first overall. Mm-hmm. He was on Good Morning Football on Wednesday, and he said, you know what, if we keep it real, Will Levis and Anthony Richardson, those two quarterbacks need to go to favorable situations to where they don't have to touch the field immediately in the NFL. So for all of you Will Levis guys, all of you Anthony Richardson guys, understand this. If you do draft, and I think Anthony Richardson will be the more likely candidate at number two in the world where, where you know, if if was a fifth, then the whole Texan organization could be drunk if they do this, but, you know, that Rumin, you got to look at a, a camp battle between Davis Mills and Case Keenum for the number one quarterback because Anthony Richardson is not ready. My belief is he is not ready. Will Levis is not ready. I think that in any other draft classes, they may be second or third round draft picks. Now, both of them do some things differently than what we may see of Malik Willis, who went third last year uh, in the third round last year. Anthony Richardson is a much more you know athletic quarterback. Than Malik Willis. And then when I turn on the tape, Anthony Richardson, I believe, is a better quarterback. Doesn't mean he doesn't need the time to sit and wait behind a, a guy that's already in command of the offense. And that's the problem. Houston does not have an Alex Smith for a Patrick Mahomes or an Alex Smith for a Colin Kaepernick. They don't have a Joe Flacco for, for a Lamar Jackson. They don't have a, a guy right now that's in total command of an offense, but you just know they need to move forward. They don't have a Geno Smith who's in total command of the Seattle Seahawks offense, which I think Anthony Richardson should be in Seattle when the draft is over. They don't have a guy like that here in Houston. So by all means, rule out Anthony Richardson. Rule out Will Levis. They should not be in Houston. It should only be two guys if Houston goes quarterback at two, which we both believe they will. That should be Bryce Young or CJ Stroud. I'm done. <laughs> and if I had to pick, after you say it all, I'm going to keep my really short. If I had to pick between Bryce or CJ, uh, I'm going to pick Bryce Young. And the one thing that kind of separates Young from CJ is everything that you just alluded to, John. Um, him being cool, calm, and collective in critical moments. You take a look at the Houston Texans in 2022. They lost several games by one score losses. And a lot of those times we came on this show saying if they had a better quarterback, if they had a more calm quarterback, Quarterback, a, a, a quarterback who can process things a lot better, they probably would have came out victorious in several of those games. When I take a look at Bryce Young, it already seems like he has the clutch genes to me, and that's the guy that I'll be rolling with. Welcome back in, Locked On Texan listeners, and thank you for making the Locked On Texans your first listen every day. Got Cole Thompson on tomorrow, but make sure you check mm-hmm. out and make the second li- your second listen of the day locked on scouting, NFL scouting with the draft dudes. Firm free agency to the draft, salary cap management, and more. Join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL franchise every Monday through Friday. Find locked on scouting, NFL scouting with the draft dudes wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. 
every day. So a lot of Texan fans have been sad lately. <laughs> sad? Um, Why? This yeah. is an exciting period. It's a, it's an exciting time. Well, when I say sad, you know, the past couple of years, been kind of down, been kind of not clinically depressing, of course, you know, no jokes towards that, but it's been kind of depressing as an NFL fan. But I want to remind you guys that it could always be worse. And what I mean by that, well, Warren Sharp at Sharp Football on Twitter, years, he had a tweet, years without a playoff win. Now you got the Rams, you got Tampa Bay, one year without a playoff win. Mm, that's, you know, that's like both of those two teams. Yeah, have just won. won. Super Bowl. Yeah, they just, just won. won Super Bowls in the past couple of seasons. Nothing biggie. You got Cleveland, you know, Baltimore, Green Bay, New Orleans, two years. You got Tennessee, Houston. So shout out to the AFC South, Minnesota, Seattle, three years without a playoff win. <laughs> we know the last time Houston Texans was in the playoff. But <laughs> You got New England, my oh boys my up in the AFC East, LA, the LA Chargers, and Indy, AFC South, mate, four years without a playoff win. Let's bump it up a couple of years. You got New York, the New York Jets, and the Chicago Bears. And the last time the Jets won a playoff game, I believe they were in the AFC championship game with Mark Sanchez. It was, because he led them to that. Y'all beat him that year. That I was 2012, it, 13? I think, it, I think them back-to-back -back years, 2011, back-to-back -back years, I believe. Okay. Yeah, you got you got the uh, Washington Commanders, 17 years. You got the L.A. – sorry, guys. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. They got 20 years since the last time they won a playoff game. Miami. 22 years without a playoff game mm. and one franchise oh, Lord, who hasn't know. won a playoff game since I was born. <laughs> since before I was born. Say we, say we. You only we like two born. weeks older than me. <laughs> since before you and I were born, the Detroit mm. Lions. Let me Break tell you something. Break it down. Break it down. I got family from Detroit. We went out to Detroit the same year the Detroit Pistons won the championship for a family reunion. When I tell you, if you would have asked any of the Detroit Lions fans about, or anybody from Detroit at that time about the Detroit Lions, they will look at you like, we don't give a damn about the Lions. You talking about heartbreak? The Detroit Lions have probably caused more heartbreaks then a drunk man at the bar listening to 90s music. No, a drunk <laughs> man at the bar listening to Cause I Love You by Lenny Williams. So, Texas fans, you may think you have it bad. And in some cases, uh, you may do. But remember, it's always worse because you could be mm. a Detroit Lion fan. Mm. And ladies and gentlemen, that's bad. That's 31 years worth of pain, Ooh. agony, heartbreak. Uh, being a loser, uh, being a loser, uh, uh, your 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 best players walking out on you. They telling you they're going to get milk and they ain't never coming back. <laughs> That's what it's like to be a Detroit Megatron. Lions. <laughs> yeah, you never coming but, back. But but the one thing when when I take a look at the Lions, man, the worst part about it is within these last 30, 31 years, this is the most promise they probably ever had outside of the Megatron Matt Stafford years. And to this point, you can debate me all we want, and I know this is locked on Texans, but that stat alone is the reason why I never considered Matthew Stafford as a top-tier quarterback because I don't understand how you have Megatron. And, you, and they went to the playoffs twice, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, Matt right? Matt Stafford took the Lions to the playoffs, I believe, three times, one with Megatron, two when he had more of an – option to spread the ball out mm -hmm. uh was that marvin jones that one year and mm, yeah and marvin jones was that anyways i don't I understand so. I, I don't understand how you could be a top tier quarterback and you have the likes of marvin jones and megatron and my god we remember how good megatron was and you don't win not one playoff game that that's just me that's just me i don't i don't understand it that I so you know, hey, but but like you say, John, it could always be worse. But things are looking up for the Detroit Lions, things are looking up for the Houston Texans, things are looking up for the New York Jets. 
while things are not looking up for the New England Patriots as of right now, um, it seems like what we are experiencing in the NBA, we are about to start experiencing in the NFL. Well, probably in the next year or so, we're going to look at the standings and everything's going to flip. It's going to be the Houston Texans, the Jacksonville Jaguars at the top of the AFC. It's going to be the Detroit Lions at the top of the NFC, probably. You know, all the teams that has been at the bottom of the basement for years and years and years. And for the Houston Texans sake of things, they should they I still don't think they should be in the situation that they've been that they've been in over these last couple of years. I still think we fell into some type of multi-universe that got the Texans here to begin with. But, you know. Things are looking up for a lot of these subpar franchises, man. And I just can't wait for the day where we look at the standings and we talking about the possibility of the Texans and I don't know, the Lions being in Super Bowl 64. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, then the next time the Texans get they get their team to that type of pinnacle, just make sure you don't hire a youth pastor to come on your organization. And make sure you hide the massage tables as well. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texas podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texas. Also, take those same 10 fingers. You don't need all 10, maybe just two or three to scroll over to YouTube and subscribe to the Locked On Texas YouTube page as well. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody Seal, T Y D A V I S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.